it's a highly tactical presentation. No, no uh, fussy stuff today. Um, I'm not even gonna do too much of the, the the usual intro you get for from these webinars. It's just like a, everything that I want to say is uh, I'm a copywriter turned competitive intelligence specialist. Uh, because of the nature of the business that I launched, which is called Stack Against, we do um, comparison pages and comparison based content for SaaS companies. <clears throat> and because of the nature of the kind of content that we write, we became specialists at finding and understanding um, your competitors' strengths and weaknesses so we can leverage that in the content that we create for you, right? So why do competitive Intel? A lot of companies don't really put budget here, don't really spend time. Like there, there's so many priorities uh, uh, running SaaS, right? I understand that. So a lot of companies leave these for uh, other time. But why is competitive Intel important? I think, well, there are many ways to leverage competitive Intel, but I think the most important one is really staying on top of what your competitors are doing and how they're playing the game allows you to be strategic about your own uh, moves as well, right? So I think the biggest benefit, it's always being able to think and rethink your positioning in the market, in your specific category. If you need to move to a different category, if your business model is the best fit for what your customers want. If you should go after a different segment in the category or maybe redefining your messaging for a specific segment of customers, right? And then there's a, there's tons of ways to apply that in, in, a, in a tactical way. And we're gonna see some of that today, like compare pages, sales battle cards. There's a lot of that. But the most important approach, and, and if you're an, if you're a fan of April Dunford, you you know that uh, understanding which competitive alternatives are, are are there in your space, or what would customers do if they wouldn't buy from you. So understanding what your competitors are doing enables you to think about your position in the market and how to solidify that position and go after your best fit, fit customers, right? So that's why you want to do competitive intel. As opposed to what a lot of people think when you say competitive Intel, that it's just about seeing every, every single new feature that a, custom, that a competitor released and, and just copying that immediately. Or uh, I don't know, uh, seeing something that they change in their messaging and now you have to change your messaging as well. It's not about uh, copying competitors, absolutely not. Like I would say it's quite the opposite. It's about understanding what they do and trying to find gaps in there that 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 play to your strengths, right? And it's not about being co uh, competitor obsessed because you don't want to go after every single thing that they do. You want to stay on top of that to inform your strategies, but you don't want to follow their lead all the time because that's going to move you away from your vision for uh, for your product right so uh the, the mantra and this is not something that is coming from me this is uh i talked to a bunch of uh, professionals in the competitive intelligence space in product marketing that do competitive intelligence and their goal is always to be customer obsessed lead with your customers what they want what you know about them and then be competitor aware as well so that informs your strategy Right, and then <clears throat> before we begin, just a a, a quick um, uh, note here: competitive intelligence doesn't replace market intelligence. Right, so market intelligence are it's kind of like the high level view. Right, it's about understanding your customers, as we just said, uh, what trends are happening in your space, what kind of opportunities are out there uh, where you could move into or your competitors are moving into, and then the competitive intel is. <clears throat> understanding how your specific competitors and not all of them, like the ones that might really affect your business and affect your revenue opportunities, how they're moving in your specific space, what positions they're taking, and then trying to um, bring the battle to a place where you are gonna do better or just understanding that so it shapes your strategy, right? And just to make this uh, a bit more clear, uh, this is from uh, a presentation that I saw from uh, Andy McCartan-Bignell. He's um, 
his competitive intelligence at uh, Apollo recently. He uh, used to do competitive intelligence at, at ClickUp, so a guy that really knows uh, what he's talking about. And he runs a, a community called Hel Healthy Competition. Um, so if you're interested in this, you might want to check that out. So the, the, the differences are here, as you can say, as you can see, everything that is market intelligence is more like high level stuff, like the size of the market, what kind of segments you can find there, what kind of trends you can see in the in the space. And then competitive intel is about understanding the product offering that your competitors have, uh, understanding uh, pricing tactics, specific strengths and weaknesses from your competitors. And that's what we're going to focus on today, right? This side of the Venn diagram. Cool. So uh, I'm ready to get started with, uh, with these 19 sources. Uh, and this comes precisely from the work that we've done, right? We, we, a few of these are pretty straightforward. We're gonna try to put a spin on some of these ideas on, on how to find uh, insights in a faster way or maybe uh, more relevant insights to your efforts. And some of these, uh, channels or, 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 or tactics or sources uh, come from really having projects where there's no, there's nothing to uh, hold on to, like really tough to find differentiators. So you got to get creative. You got to try to find different ways to get to these uh, insights. And we found a few of those uh, ideas. And today we're going to share that with you. So uh, unless somebody has a question up to this uh, point, I'm going to get started here. We're good to go? Okay, awesome. So I'm going to start with a pretty, pretty interesting one. This is using your competitor's help desk to get insights. And when I sell, he say help desk, this is kind of like the uh, documentation um, resource in, in your competitor's uh, website. And you can usually find it here, support at your competitor Dot com. So it could be support, it could be documentation, whatever it is, I'm sure you're going to find it uh, pretty easily. And uh, this is a source of um, the most technical content around your competitors' products and features. So right away, that's something that you should get familiar with uh, at a certain point, if not for every single feature, for the core features or, or the features that uh, um, you're, uh, <clears throat> you're trying to differentiate on, right? You you want to understand those features in detail. But then here's a way that we found to, um, to really drill down into that content and, and surface insights that might be difficult to get to if we just navigate a, a help desk manually without any any guidance, right? So we use Google search operators and we're gonna see this uh, often in this presentation to really get to those uh, insights, uh, it, it kind of like a shortcut to some of these insights. And this is an example, this is from an actual project that we conducted for Gorgias. So if you search for site uh, support.sendes.com, basically you're telling Google search for these keywords, but only uh, in this documentation right, in this subdomain in this case. And then you you can do anything. In this case, we searched for Gorgeous and we found multiple entries where people were mentioning Gorgeous. And as you can see, this is, this is the preview on Google and it, it already starts showing you how uh, somebody is describing a, a capability in Gorgeous that Zendesk doesn't have, right? So immediately you wanna dig in there and you wanna see uh, what's up because people are just, are straight up giving you, this is how Gorgeous wins versus Sendesk, right? At least around this uh, specific uh, use case. And um, you can try anything. You can try uh, a keyword like a, like a, a pain point or a specific feature, anything like that. And even better, and this was the case, the case for uh, Sendesk, even better if your competitor allows comments in their help desk, right? Because you're not just gonna see the the the, the written article by the by the in-house team at your competitor, but you're also gonna see comments from their own customers, and they're gonna describe this works for me, this doesn't work, this is how I use it, right? And that's where you really get 
to uh, some of these really great insights when, when customers are discussing these and how they use those features in their daily lives. And uh, what kind of intel you can surface from this effort, especially win-loss reasons from real customers, like I said, if they have uh, an option for uh, comments, and then mentions of your product in your competitor's help, help desk, which is great to go right after those uh, comparisons. And then, uh, like I said, bonus, if you can, if you want to search for specific keywords, that's also a great way to shortcut uh, into uh, certain topics that you want to know more about, right? So in this case, custom fields was a, was a differentiator that Gorgeous had, and we went right away to understand how Zendesk was using that or was offering that. And we found a, a bunch of ways to, to be able to tell people, this is how it works for us. This is how it works with uh, Zendesk. And if you use uh, the help desk to find certain features in, in specific, you can find stuff like uh, feature availability per plan, which is also great. Maybe when you're uh, thinking about how to package your uh, tiers and, and your pricing plans, uh, feature capabilities. Sometimes uh, you like, let's say uh, custom fields. What you call custom fields might not be exactly the same uh, in terms of what your competitor does, right? So going to the, the, the help desk and understanding how that feature works and what enables for customers, that's a great way to uh, understand those differences. Um, potential integrations, feature differentiation, stuff like that. Okay, moving on to uh, number two or three, Google Ads. Google Ads, you, like, this is very straightforward. You can search for uh, competing brands and see who's running ads for those keywords, right? So let's say you are in the project manage management space. You might not be a Asana, but you want to search for uh, branded keywords for a Asana to see who else is bidding for that. It allows you to understand which brands are competing for that space. You might find competitors that maybe they're not listed somewhere else, like G2, for example. You might find um, products from different categories that are trying to move into this new category. And you also find uh, a lot of messaging ideas that you can try for your brand as well. Doesn't mean you need to copy everything, but uh, for sure it's gonna give you some inspiration. Uh, okay, Intel to look for, uh, apart from current ads that are running, especially positioning and depositioning statements. A lot of these, uh, in a lot of these Google ads, um, when you're bidding for competing brands, uh, the, the copy, it's all about differentiator right? Differentiation. So uh, a lot of people use claims to say, they don't do this, we do, right? So you, you that, that's a, a direct shortcut to understanding how two products could be competing. Um, pretty related to Google Ads, we can talk about like whole ad libraries, right? So Google Ads, this, uh, this uh, method, it's a bit more manual. You have to go through certain keywords and, and see what pops up. But if you go to the specific libraries, you're going to have so much volume and, and so much intel to go through. Uh, here are four different libraries from Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Google, and TikTok. And you just go in there. You can search for specific countries. You can search for specific brands. And they bring out all, like, all of the ads that are running for these uh, products uh, uh, right now. And you can even see, like, from example, from Meta, you can see how many ads are using this creative, uh, how long how, has this uh, ad uh, have, has been running for. So a lot of intel there to understand uh, what's working for these uh, competitors and what you might uh, what you might use for your own ads as well. Okay, so source number five, your competitor's website. Really straightforward. Obviously, you're going. You, you want to have. Uh, you want to spend some time looking. Uh, through your competitor's website. But again, here's a, a shortcut to get into some of these answers, right? Use the, uh, the Google search operator, focus on just your uh, your competitor's domain, and then use the keywords uh, in different ways. You might want to search for uh, specific features. In this case, uh, like you're seeing here, recurring task. From, just from this exercise, we started to surface uh, complaints from users talking about the way that recurring tasks work in Asana that are not really helpful. And I remember this was a, a project that we did for a for a competitor 
that was all about allowing you to set up recruiting tasks and automate a lot of stuff and really position the product uh, for process-driven companies, right? So we searched for this uh, in the Asana domain and we started uh, getting questions, complaints, objections from real customers uh, in, in, in Asana's website. And again, you can use keywords like, um, you can try use cases, you can try specific features, you can try pain points. You're not just gonna suffer, uh, surface stuff like this, but maybe you can find um, feature breakdowns that are not easily accessible from the, 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 the front end website. So spend some time playing with, the, uh, with these as well. And stuff that you might surface, feature differentiation, uh, differentiation user questions and issues, uh, value prop statements, stuff like that. Uh, source number six, your competitor's public roadmap. For example, feedback.glorify.com. So this is where, uh, I don't know if you've seen like uh, many SaaS products, they offer a, a roadmap where people can vote for the different features or suggest different ideas or features they wanna see in the product. So you wanna spend most of your time looking at the in consideration plan or in progress uh, columns, because that's that that's where the features that your competitors are gonna be releasing soon or maybe, but um, the kind of features that your, your customers wanna see in your competitor's product, so if you spend some time looking at that, you're going to find these feature gaps, especially if you find stuff that you have uh, and they don't. And especially, you can even dig for more specific insights if you focus on uh, features that have a lot of outboards, like in this case, for example, uh, video, audio, and uh, music exports, right? That's the clear winner in this stage versus all of these features. So if you can see what a lot of people are asking from your competitors. And if you have this already, you know that you can use that and you can leverage that in your content, right? Sell these because this is something that a lot of people want and your competitors don't offer. So right away, that gives you an edge. Um, feature gaps, ideas for your own roadmap. That's the kind of intel you're gonna find from here. Uh, source number seven, recent one lost deals. This is probably, um, a bit more complex, a bit more sophisticated. Um, companies that usually have their own competitive Intel program already in place are doing this, but it's not so difficult, especially if you're already used to talking with your uh, with your customers. If you're good at that, a lot of I know a lot of founders that don't like to uh, spend a lot of time on the phone with customers, unfortunately. Uh, but if you're already doing that. Just focusing on uh, one and lost deals is just tweaking your process a little bit. So I would say focus on any deals that you've recently won or lost. If we're talking about lost deals, you'll probably have to think about incentivizing uh, those uh, customers. You're probably going to have to send them a, an Amazon gift card or something like that in order to get them on the phone in the first place. But once you manage to schedule a call with them, if you can spend 30 minutes, 45 minutes, asking them questions around why they chose your competitor over you, or in the case of one deals, why they, they ended up going with you uh, versus your competitor, at which point they felt like they were making the right choice by going with you, uh, how that's been um, materializing now that they use, and that, that they're using the product, or maybe how's life now that they chose a competitor a couple of weeks or a couple of months down the road, is that working out for you? Is that really what you expect it to be? So dig around that. This is probably the more the, where you get the most insights from. Out of all of the, 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 the tactics that uh, we're gonna discuss today or I'm gonna show today, this is probably where you're gonna get the most insights from because you actually get to spend a few minutes with customers and go deep uh, in terms of these conversations. So if you don't have these, try to set up a, like a, an automation to reach out to these uh, won and lost deals and try to start um, getting these conversations going. You can save them, you can get these trans, uh, transcripts and save them somewhere for other people in your team to, to get access to, even better. You're gonna get stuff to inform your sales messaging, your uh, marketing 
your positioning, your product development, your customer support, everything from, out of these conversations. Um, stuff to look for, win-loss reasons, uh, product persona fit, like is your product built for these kind of uh, customers that you're going after? Uh, value prop alignment, how does your messaging resonate with people that might be considering buying from you? Uh, feature gaps and also competitors' depositioning strategies. A lot of these uh, customers, especially the ones that you want, they're going to tell you, yeah, I talked to your competitor and they said your product uh, lacks X, Y, C or doesn't do X, Y, C or it works in this way. And you're going to get a lot of intel on how your competitors are trying to compete against you, which you can use to um, get ahead of the game, right? Because when, whenever a new prospect comes along, you can, you, can, you can preempt those objections. And you can say, if you're talking to, especially if you have a sales-led uh, motion, if you talk to uh, X competitor, you're going to hear, hear stuff about certain features that we lack or, or how we operate. And you can tackle that heads on and you can straight away say, that's not true. Or uh, maybe some of that is true, but this is how we do things versus what they're going to tell you, right? So a lot of objections that you can get in front of before they hear that from your competitors. Uh, number eight, review sites. The usual G2, Captera, Trustpilot. But how do you get more stuff from these uh, places which you probably are already um, like skimming through uh, at certain points? Uh, it's a it's a good way to find what people love and hate about competitors. But again, use the tools at hand. A lot of these uh, sites, especially I think G2, they have a search bar and nobody uses that. So use the search bar. And for example, if you're looking uh, at Zoom Infos, uh, this is just an example, right? If you're looking at Zoom Infos reviews, try to search for Apollo, if you're Apollo, right? Try, try to search for your own brand name and see if anybody's refer, uh, referring to uh, your product in those reviews. So this is a good example of somebody that is not really happy with Zoom Info, and uh, they're talking about how Apollo compares against them uh, in this review. So use the search terms, the search bar, sorry, uh, search for features, search for pain points, ser search for um, common objections like pricing, customer support, stuff like that to dig into those uh, specific uh, uh, issues. What you're gonna find, feature gaps, win-loss reasons, objections to our competitors. This is probably the biggest uh, thing that you can get. And also, don't just focus on the five-star reviews or the one-star reviews. The one-star reviews are usually crap uh, because a lot of people are just saying, oh, they, 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 they charged me uh, wrongly or I, I wanted to cancel and they wouldn't cancel. And that makes sense. Like if everybody's complaining about that, maybe you can build a story around that. But those, those are usually like um, outlier situations and a couple of angry customers that are going to be very uh, loud uh, in, in, in those review sites. So try to focus on the three-star reviews or at least read a bunch of the top reviews, middle reviews, and low reviews so you get the whole picture. And how to get more out of these uh, without spending too much time? Use tools with the AI. A lot of tools are now offering like a, an automated way to go through all of this uh, process. I think I'm a bit wary about AI in competitive intelligence. AI, it's really good for a lot of things, but to really understand the nuance, to compare products, to really be able to say, this is how a product works versus another one, AI is not really built for that. Or at least at the moment, the capabilities are kind of limited, right? But you can absolutely use a tool like Senja and they have a free review mining tool where you can just plug a URL to your competitor's uh, reviews and it gives you a summary of these are their strengths, their weaknesses, this is what people complain the most about. And I, and I think I, I haven't used it for a while, but um, uh, you can even like click on certain uh, themes and it shows you the specific reviews where it got it from. So you can, it's a mix of, automating uh, a bit of the of the legwork but you can also see the source of the data and, and actually go to the to the to the review which is uh, where you're going to get the insight from um number 9 your competitors free trial or demo again pretty straightforward a lot of companies outsource these uh to research firms to competitive intel uh, uh agencies um 
there's a there's a a, a, a tricky thing here. Uh, you gotta be mindful about what is legal and not, and also what is ethical and uh, or not. Uh, a lot of people in competitive Intel have this position of uh, if you're caught talking about something that you got your uh, hands on in, in a way that is not ethical, how would you feel about that, right? And if you don't feel, uh, if you feel that's not the way to approach things, then maybe stay away from these tactics, right? And also a lot of competitors uh, in their uh, terms and conditions, they state that competing uh, people from competing products can't sign up for uh, their products, can't sign up for their demos or webinars. So try to be mindful about that. Try to play it safe. Um, there's there, there are different ways to get to this kind of intel. So be mindful of that. But if if it's all good, if you uh, if you're free to do that, I actually suggest you use your real email. Like if you're Zoom Info and you're signing up for an Apollo webinar, use your Zoom Info email. Let them know that you're being a part of that. And if they let you in, great. And if not, that probably means that uh, you better stay away from that. Otherwise, use a, uh, use a third party vendor, let them do the work and come to you with the Intel. Um, Intel to look for feature gaps, uh, corporate capabilities. And another thing that it, I think that is really valuable, especially for demos, you can see how they structure their uh, sales pitch, right? What do they focus on? How do they uh, start? Do they start with discovery? Do they start by trying to understand the the, um, the customer's pains, or do they just go in uh, with a pitch, or or they just open the demo and they start showing features? The way that they present their product is going to let you um, rethink about how you're presenting yours as well. Uh, source number 10, anything that is uh, download, downloadable from your competitor's website. So again, you can use operators here, Google search operators. So not just the site operator, but also the file type. So if you use PDF here, you can, you can narrow down the search to uh, PDF files, which makes it way more interesting uh, from the get-go because usually these companies are going to build uh, more specific material for PDF because they usually use that as lead magnets or lead behinds uh, after sales conversations. So you might find Intel there uh, or feature descriptions, pricing descriptions that are not going to be publicly available on the on the website. So you want to focus there and especially pricing. I think that's where most of your um, Intel uh, is going to come from for this kind of uh, tactic. So Here's a, a quick example, site send this.com, file type PDF pricing. That alone uh, shows you something like this, right? Which you're not gonna get uh, somewhere else. And these, uh, believe it or, or not, it had a, a pricing uh, table that was way more in depth than the one that uh, send this has on their public website. It not only had more details in terms of uh, what, what each plan included, but also specific descriptions of different features included on, the, on those plans that uh, you wouldn't see somewhere else. Uh, so yeah, detailed pricing descriptions, uh, value prop statements, if you're looking at uh, eBooks or stuff like that, uh, in-depth uh, feature breakdowns, all of that you're gonna find from these assets. Source number 11, the Wayback Machine. Um, for anybody that is not familiar, you just go to this URL, you enter whatever uh, page you wanna enter there, uh, the URL, and it gives you like a historic uh, view of any time that the Wayback Machine capture uh, that page. So you can go back in time and see how that page looked like a couple of months uh, from now, a few years from now. And that allows you to see uh, when they launch a specific feature or maybe uh, something that I, that I find really valuable, changes in messaging and positioning over time. So you can basically see how a company has been playing with, the, with, with their value props and, and positioning for certain uh, product launches and um, how that changes over time, which you can use to inform your own strategies. Uh, just as a note, uh, the Wave machine is not gonna catch every single update uh, for a page. And it's a bit of a manual process to get to those, uh, those snapshots. So you're gonna have to spend some time playing with it. 
Uh, but yeah, you can see that feature updates, new feature launches, and especially new messaging and positioning ideas. Uh, number 12, your competitors release notes or change log. For example, changelog.shopify.com. And you can see this is pretty straightforward. It's just your competitor giving you some intel for you to grab freely, right? Nothing too complicated, but um, a lot of, a lot of uh, companies don't pay attention to this, right? So it's an easy way to get some surface level intel on what your competitors are up to. And uh, usually feature updates, new launches, and some more general company news you're gonna see here in the, in the release notes. Uh, number 13, your competitor social channels, like your same rush Twitter channel here. But how do you get more out of this? Uh, or how do you get this intel uh, without having to do a lot of the manual work, add your uh, the social feeds to your Slack, right? It's pr pretty easy ways to um, connect a Twitter feed or Twitter uh, handle to a specific uh, Slack channel, and you're gonna get that coming to you without you ho having to remember to go that, uh, there every single day or week or, or whatever, right? And then from there, you can skim through uh, the most recent update, updates, find what's valuable, and then channel that to specific people that might be interested in learning more. Uh, Intel to look for, again, general company news, launch cadences. This is also good to start. Um, you're never gonna understand it or, or get a, a perfect view of how, how often your competitors launch uh, new uh, product releases, but you're gonna get a good idea after some time, right? It's kind of like you're living with your competitor in a way and you, you get a hold of their, their habits in a way. So that's good to, to understand as well. Sales calls. This is very similar to the win-loss uh, interviews that we, we talked about uh, just now. Sales calls are a great source for competitive intel. And the, the best way to do this is setting up something like Gong, or any other similar tool, but uh, anything that listens to these conversations and then surfaces the intel for you. That's where these uh, tools get really uh, interesting because you can enter certain uh, keywords or talk tracks that you wanna, uh, um, you wanna capture and the tool does it for you and it brings this intel, it surfaces this intel for you. So some uh, tips if you're gonna be uh, using these. Let your reps know what you consider to be great intel and they will get it from you and will keep you updated. Especially, and this is one of the things that you want, you can do, like if you're on Slack, create a channel specific to competitive intel and tell your reps, whenever you hear people talking about a specific competitor, drop it here, right? So instead of waiting for Gong to pick that up, sometimes uh, it's not gonna pick it up precisely, your reps are gonna be like, hey, I just talked to someone, they mentioned XYZ about XYZ competitor, so that goes into the uh, competitive inter channel. Uh, use filters to track deck usage. This is, if you're already spending time um, building competitive messaging and uh, creating decks, and especially uh, talk, tr uh, talk tracks for your, uh, your reps, you're feeding them, specific ideas or phrasing to use, you can use Gong to search for those uh, keywords and tell you if uh, reps are actually using those ideas and how that's resonating because you're gonna be able to connect uh, the, 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 that usage to how many deals are you winning and how many deals are you moving forward, right? And also set up trackers to dump that, that Intel into a Slack channel, right? You can set up Gong to find these, uh, these uh, mentions and then bring it back to Slack if that's the way you prefer it. Stuff that you're gonna find, win loss reasons, uh, product persona feed, messaging feed, and uh, other than this internally, again, you're gonna understand how your sales reps are using this competitive Intel, how often they use it and how uh, effective it is with your customers. Uh, number 15, Google Alerts. Google alert, Alerts is pretty easy. You just go to google.com slash alerts and you enter any keyword that you wanna uh, keep track of. The problem with this is that it's like a fire hose sometimes, right? <laughs> You're gonna get so many alerts. Like I tried it. I tried Stack Against, which is not a very common 
brand name, but uh, Google captures anything that includes stack or against and stack against. So I'm getting notifications about anything, right? So it takes a little bit of time to uh, set up these alerts in a way that is meaningful, that is relevant to you. But uh, if you can play with this uh, and get to a point where it's usable, then again, it's a good source of, um, you don't have to do the manual discovery. Google, which is arguably the best source to be searching through the internet, is gonna do it for you, right? And it's free and you can set it up to go to a Slack channel, the same as we discussed uh, just now. So a uh, pretty easy way to get the Intel coming back to you. Company news, feature updates, stuff like that is the usual uh, Intel that you're gonna get from this channel. Uh, your sales reps. So again, kind of like uh, talk about this uh, a bit, but you wanna, you wanna guide your sales reps to do some of these uh, Intel mining for you, right? So you can ask them like often, like every week, or maybe again, you can set up a channel where they this, they, they get these questions uh, regularly and they have to answer these every week, bi-weekly. So, but you, you, you need to ask them, you need to prompt them in order to get these questions because reps, they're gonna be focusing on some something else. They're gonna try to be moving like deals forward. They're not gonna put a lot of time into this unless you you push them. So how are buyers speaking about the competition? What is the competition saying about us? About us? If you can ask them these questions, then you're gonna surface more, more of this Intel. And again, set up a Slack channel and let them uh, get that intel for you. Um, I wanna be mindful of time, so I'm gonna speed through some of these because these are kind of repetitive. So let's go straight to the sources. Number 17, customers who switch from a competitor. This is even uh, better than those win-loss interviews that we talked about uh, before. If you can find uh, during your sales conversations, if you, if you've identified a customer is coming from a competitor already and is switching to you, then that is a gold mine that you want to use. So try to talk to them, try to get someone from your team to talk to them after the deal is closed. You don't want to over over overwhelm them while the deal is uh, still happening, right? But talk to them and ask them why they switch, at which point they realize that that competitor wasn't the, the right fit for them anymore. Uh, what made them convinced that you were the better alternative? How did they find you? All of those questions are going to bring so many insights. And the pro tip here is don't just ask them and use that for Intel, create case studies. Uh, I don't know if you know Joel Klecki, but Joel uh, runs a company called Case Study Buddy. They do case studies for SaaS companies. That's all they do. And he says, that the most compelling, the most effective case study in order to drive uh, conversions are switcher case studies, which is customers that switch from a competitor and they were ha happy to tell that story uh, for a case study. So when you're talking to them, make sure that you get permission to turn that conversation into a case study because that's going to be super valuable to use for uh, your own marketing. Um, 18 Slack communities, this might be a bit broad, but certain products are gonna get a lot of value for this. So for example, let's say, I don't know, let's say you, you, you have a product for bloggers. Join Slack communities where bloggers spend time, content strategies, uh, copywriters, which I know there are a ton of, and just join those communities. And apart from being an active participant, you can set Slack to notify you about certain keywords, right? So you can use this to uh, see when somebody mentions a competitor, when somebody mentions your brand, or when somebody mentions specific keywords that you want to track, right? It's as easy as going to the notifications and entering those keywords there. And Slack is just going to show you when these uh, conversations happen. So that's also interesting. And the final one before we get to how to use this content, Reddit. Reddit is pretty similar to Slack a huge, huge resource for real customer interaction. So that's where Reddit really gets interesting because products don't, like, there's not a lot of marketing there. Reddit is very good at moderating communities. 
So companies can get away with blood and, blood and self-promotion, right? So you can search, you can again use operators to uh, try to find stuff on Reddit alone. So in this example, we wanted to find about um, processing fails from Stripe because we knew that was kind of like a, an objection that people had, but we didn't get a lot of intel from the usual channel. So we went to Reddit to see what people were saying about this specifically. And right away, you can see you have so many threads where not only the original post gives you some insights, but people straight, straight away like talking about their own uh, experiences, people comparing stuff, people talking about, I stopped using Stripe because this happened and I moved to somewhere else. So this is ready, it's a, it's a, it's a gold mine for these kind of insights if you know how to narrow down those searches and get to, to, to the kind of info that you want to uh, get to. And especially don't use Reddit's search function because it sucks. Go straight to Google and tell Google search for this on Reddit. So that's going to be a way better approach. You're going to waste so much time if you try to use uh, Reddit uh, search form. So. Okay, I think I covered that 49 minutes, pretty good time. <laughs> we still have time to talk about how to use this content, but um, Sonny, I don't know if you have any questions. No, for now, no questions. I just want to say what you said about Reddit is spot on. We started focusing on Reddit and it just, it makes a huge difference. So definitely yeah, spot on yeah. with that. Exactly. Amen. But loving it, so. Okay. No I've. I think I promised a very tactical presentation and I think I'm delivering it at this point. So uh, hopefully the, the, the next uh, section uh, gives you that extra edge because Intel is great, but how you use it is really uh, where you get the value from Intel. Because if you just sit on it, then you spend a lot of time not really getting anywhere, right? So how do you use the Intel that you just surfaced? There's tons of ways to use this Intel. So I wanted to capture the most important ones. And I think this is the most important way to use this Intel. And I've said this before, a couple of people join after this. So if you're uh, an April Danfor fan, if you understand her framework for positioning, you know that understanding which competitive alternatives customers have in your category, it's a a really important step into shaping your own positioning, right? So now that you have all this intel around your competitors and you understand their weaknesses, their gaps, and your strengths compared to them, you can build a story around that, right? So positioning and depositioning uh, angles are one of the major ways we use this intel for our clients and that I suggest you use for your own uh, company, right? And Probably one of the best examples in, in advertising history is Avis going with this, we're only number two, so why go with us, right? They understood uh, their, the, the strengths of, of their main competitor and they found a way to position themselves uh, and find a gap there and compete uh, in, a, in a field that played to their strengths as opposed to uh, Hertz. Um, Compare and versus pages. This is our thing, is what we do the most, like every day we're, we're working on these kind of assets and uh, we build these pages with the Intel that we source for clients. So our approach is we go through all of these channels that I just show you, we create a brief from this, we create a positioning angle first, we try to, to say, okay, what is gonna be the story that we want to tell versus his competitor. And then from that story, we select the intel that we want to use and the, and the differentiators that we want to use because you, you don't get to use them, all of these uh, differentiators all the time. It doesn't happen that way. You can overwhelm customers with, uh, with that level of information, but you can absolutely choose based on this story that, that I want to tell, what are our main strengths that we found and then lead with that, right? So you can do this uh, standard versus pages like this one from uh, Twist versus Slack. You can do the listicles 
uh, detailing, I don't know, 10 Slack alternatives and you and you give people a, a, in a nutshell idea of how each competitor works, who is it built for, their strengths and weaknesses. Again, you don't have to go too deep when you're writing those articles, otherwise you're gonna write 20,000 words for a single article. Uh, but from the intel that you gather, summarize that for customers. Because at the end of the day, that's also what customers want. Give me a quick, like a shortcut way to make this decision as accurately as possible. And that's how you win when you create this content. When you create something that is meaningful, that guides them to a decision, but at the same time, it's not overwhelming to the point where they're gonna get bored reading uh, your piece, leave your page and, uh, and you've lost them, right? Um, battle cards and leave behinds. This is an example of a battle card. Well, it wasn't exactly a battle card, uh, but something that we created for a, for a, for a client. And uh, this is battle cards are usually uh, for internal purposes, right? I don't know if you're familiar with sales battle cards, but they're usually these one pagers where you detail in a nutshell again, how you compare against a specific competitor. Uh, what's your main positioning strengths versus them? What are your core features that you have and they don't? Uh, pricing comparisons, anything that your sales reps can open and at a glance answer when the customer asks, okay, but how do you compare against X, Y, C? Because that question is gonna come up a lot and more and more with time is gonna keep happening. Customers know that they have options. There are many options in the market. So you gotta know how to answer that question before people jump on a call with you. And battle cards is a way to enable your sales reps to answer those questions. Uh, with, from the intel that you already surfaced. And leave behinds, there are usually customer facing docs. So when somebody asks this question and you wanna uh, follow up in the conversation with a, with a resource that summarizes that for them, you can, uh, you can send them something that looks something like this here in this example, right? This was a multi-page leave behind and you're seeing some of the, the basic comparisons and then we went deeper into certain uh, themes that were uh, important for, for this, uh, this client. Talk tracks. Uh, competitors have strengths and have weaknesses, and you want to know how to uh, talk about those issues. And also, when a customer comes from, uh, from a competitor they already talked to, they're going to come with, with some baggage, right? They're going to say, okay, but I've heard that you don't have this feature or that um, you have it, but it works in, in this way, which is not exactly what I need, right? So how do you tackle those situations? You can create talk tracks for your team and then feed those uh, ideas to them and train them, coach them on how to use them. Again, internal resource. Retargeting ads. Retargeting ads are great for um, anybody that visits your bottom of the funnel content, right? So comparison pages, comparison articles, but also articles that talk about specific pain points and how your product uh, solves those pain points, uh, product pages. Anybody that is navigating those uh, pages, you can consider them to be close to or closer than other uh, visitors to making a purchasing decision. And when they're at that stage, you can bet that they are already evaluating other competitors, right? So if the if the issue is that they're considering you versus others, then maybe you wanna chase them around with some retargeting ads that go after those objections, right? Because somebody uh, that is considering DocuSign might also be considering Dropbox in this example that I'm showing you. So Dropbox, and if you go to the library uh, that I shared with you previously on LinkedIn, you're gonna see so many of these competitive ads from DocuSign targeting Dropbox, uh, targeting uh, Adobe, uh, a lot of companies with different ads and uh, you just chase your customers with these ads and hopefully you're gonna win them back. You're gonna show them this comparison and that's gonna tip them over the fence to sign up with you or, or to get a demo from you. Bottom of Funnel assets. So this is there's a slight difference between uh, this compare and versus pages, which are also bottom of funnel uh, pieces of content. But when I say assets, I mean 
um, ebooks that you can create, for example, uh, how to choose a, a product for, I don't know, recruiting, right? How to choose a product for project management. And these are detailed guides that, again, go deeper in terms of comparing, uh, comparing your product to competitors or tell, enabling um, customers to understand how to make a, a better decision, guide them uh, around that decision-making process. Uh, these are assets that they can use to champion a deal uh, other companies internally. So use that Intel again here for your positioning, for your value props, for your comparisons in these assets. Uh, you can use them in many different ways. And then also these feature comparison mat matrices, uh, you can build this for your compare pages and comparison-based content as well, yes. But you can also build longer versions of these for internal uses. I'm not a big fan of having these infinite uh, comparison tables on customer facing assets because that gets gets them lost right away. Uh, they, they, they are very, very boring, very dry. So usually customers tune out when they see them, but for your teams, again, for your sales reps, if you have a product marketing team uh, for customer support, understanding these differences is important because they're going to get many different questions from many different customers. So if you can be more precise when creating those and more, uh, not precise, but more comprehensive, extensive, cover more ground for internal uses, then you can keep these uh, comparison tables updated with the Intel that, uh, that you got, right? Okay, and that's it. Those are at least ways that I focus on how to use this uh, comparison-based content. If anybody has any other ideas right now, we wanna spend a few times sharing that along with Q&A, great. And if not, like, thank you for staying with me <laughs> through all this uh, presentation. Uh, I, I would love if you could follow me on LinkedIn, if we could like connect with me on LinkedIn, that's the main channel that I use to uh, keep talking about these issues and, and talk about uh, product marketing, comparison pages, competitive intelligence. And if you want, uh, if you're interested in setting up this competitive Intel program for your company, but you are already realizing that it might be a lot of work, maybe you don't have the manpower to do that, go to stackagainst.com slash CI, book a call with me, and we can chat about um, setting up your own competitive program for you. Fede, thanks so much. This was, a, this was an awesome, awesome talk. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, does anyone have any questions? If you do, feel free to, to unmute and ask. I have a few, but I wanted to just open it up for everyone. As they say, speak now or forever hold your peace. No. Okay, then I'm going to jump in. So, Fede, yeah. um, one question I had is, like, you're talking a lot about, like, using the competitive insights and how to use them in your content. Oh, sorry. What for you is one of the, what what for you is one of the the, the biggest mistakes you see when people go, when people try to use competitive insights in, in their um, content? What's one of the biggest mistakes that you see? Uh, great question. have to avoid. <laughs> yeah, great question. I would say um, not prioritizing. And uh, to follow up with that, I think the best way to prioritize is understanding your positioning first, your story, right? So choose who you wanna be, for which customer segment. And based on that, choose your strengths carefully, which at the end of the day, is a combination of your actual strengths, your actual unique attributes, but also the weaknesses that uh, your competitors have, right? So maybe, and we do a lot of these, uh, when we're writing multiple comparison pages for, for a client, uh, we talk about different features because maybe versus a competitor, uh, we have signatures and they don't. And that's important, so we want to focus on that. And versus another competitor, there's parity there, but they don't have payments, whatever, right? So we talk about payments. But as long as it makes sense for the story that you want to tell as a brand, right, for your product as a, as a whole, and 
the mini narrative that you create versus each competitor, then pick those strengths and selling points uh, wisely because you can't talk about everything, right? So I guess the, the, the mistake to, to, to focus on your question, the mistake is trying to cram every single thing or every single aspect where you have a slight edge on versus a competitor to a point where you have to spend a lot of time explaining exactly, oh, this is how we win versus them. When you're splitting hairs, uh, it's probably a signal that maybe that's not too clear, maybe that's not too important. And at a second level, if that win, if that feature or selling point that you're choosing is not too relevant to the story that you want to tell, then it's best to avoid, it's, be, it's best to focus on other stuff um, because you have limited uh, attention from customers and you want to convince them as fast as possible and as clearly as possible. Awesome, thanks. And then um, last question, sorry, I am aware of time, but just last question I wanted to throw out there. Oh, cool. um, with all the, with, with everything that you've done, have you found a certain business or let me put it rather, is there a certain stage in your business where you wouldn't use this, like just starting out or more advanced? Or do you think that like using competitive insights is basically you can use it any stage of your business? Uh, absolutely any stage of your business. And I think it goes back to uh, this, right? Um, maybe you're too early. You don't, you don't even have the resources to create battle cards, comparison pages, that takes time. Sometimes it takes money uh, because you need to outsource that. You don't know how to do that. And do that. Maybe you don't even have sales reps. So why create battle cards, right? Some companies, bootstrap companies, they're doing all of the sales uh, themselves, the founders, the C-level executives. So there's not necessarily a need for that. But even before you launch, you need to understand your category how others are competing in that category, uh, how they're positioning themselves, and what are the gaps that they are leaving open that you can leverage. If you don't understand that, you're gonna you're gonna launch and be part of the sameness. Uh, and in SaaS, it's getting more and more complicated to stand out and actually be effective with your marketing. Can you launch a copycat product? make it 10 bucks cheaper a month and have success? Yeah, maybe, but it's gonna be super hard. You're, uh, you're at risk of somebody else coming in and uh, cutting an extra five bucks out of the, uh, their pricing. And then suddenly you're uh, not longer the, the, the cheapest option, which is your only advantage. And even if you do, it's gonna cost you a lot of money to stand out uh, if you don't choose the right uh, the right gaps, and uh, if you go if you don't play to your strengths, so from the very beginning, even before you launch, understand how you compare, what other options are out there, and what it's going to take for you to win in the minds of the customers. Awesome, Fede, thanks so much.